points for the Kiwis. Can they win their first series since 1984? Can Matthew Ridge break Des White's record? Stay with us on Two Sports Action. We'll watch it all unfold. Great to have our friends with us on B Sky B throughout Britain. Also Foxtel in Australia. An important opening set here. Brett Todd. Well, it's important for the forwards in the Great Britain side to dominate. I thought they did that early on last week. The two front rowers are really a quantity un unknown. We didn't know too much about them, whereas New Zealand have got a real season forward pack. But they stood up and they were counted. As we see an early penalty already for Great Britain. New Zealand can't afford to do that. And Bobby Goulding finds touch about 12 metres inside New Zealand territory. So we have another look at it here. CRC replay. Just being held down there. A great attacking opportunity for the Lions early on. And this is Paul Broadbent, the Sheffield Eagle, in his fourth test match. Cunningham waits for it at dummy half. Big line up out to the right. They go to the left, though, through Farrell. He finds Sculthorpe. Now it's through the hands. Gilding. Harris, crutched by Grant Young. And over the top was Tony Iro. And he's lost the ball. That was great defence by Grant Young. A bit of a missed opportunity there for Great Britain. Yes, he's certainly a good defender, isn't he, Grant Young? And John, you'll be very happy he's coming to the Warriors next year because I think he's really got some staunch up front, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a very tough player up front. And as we just saw, a really good hitter. I think the Great Britain side have got to be a little bit disappointed with uh, the form of, of Yeston Harris last week. You know, he's, uh, he's a player that I've seen club, play club football. He can go a lot better than he's been going. Now he's... Back in the defensive line, yes, and Harris is the Kiwis get a penalty. Annesley trying to keep them apart. He wants a big 10 metres. Let's have a look on the CRC replay there. Well offside. Good call from Annesley. The Kiwis find touch right on the halfway mark. Now this is Young. Expect plenty of hit-ups from him tonight. Inside the Lions territory now. Quentin Pong here. The front rowers working in tandem. And that's one thing the New Zealand side do. They take the ball up one, then the other guy's looking to take it up, and they spin it out wide. That's going to work for them tonight. It's as though they're going to just keep wrapping the same way. Tyron Smith, now it's pretty good field position for the Kiwis to mount a good attack, and Stephen Kearney trying to crawl his way through there. 22 metres out from the line. Nero at dummy half. Stacey Jones, switch of play. They move it back to the left through Namu. Long ball over to Timu, the star of the first test win with those two late tries. And there's no way through there for Johnny Timu at the moment. About 15 metres out. Now it's Smith to Jones. There's the bomb by Stacey. And Radlitsky takes it well, and Great Britain get the penalty. The chase is inside the 10 metres. So a relieving penalty now for the Lions and Farrell finds touch. As you see here, Stacey Jones, it wasn't a great kick, but well taken by Great Britain. Dwayne Mann, your thoughts of the opening minute so far? Well, very good from both sides. Uh, we will see the bomb feature heavily again in this match. The Great Britain side running with a slight breeze at their back, a slightly cross field to the left-hand side, possibly a good opportunity for them to uh, get that long kicking game back in action. Gilding. Daryl Powell, now he's been under an injury cloud all week, Powell. Now it's Harris. Broad bent, a little flat-footed, the lines. Skullthorpe. He's an easy target for Tony Iro. The weather is fine, 12 degrees, starting to cool down a little now. Northwesterly went 5 to 10 knots. And speaking of that kicking game we were talking earlier, John, about Matthew Rich now, he has a tendency in the first three or four tackles to stand up, doesn't he? So the kicking game is on. Yeah, I, I thought it would have been a very good tactic to kick early in the tackle count, especially early in the game, to uh, just put uh, Matthew in two minds, whether to stay up that flat or get, get back a little bit deeper. Now there's a push and shove and a few punches being thrown, Goulding and Ridge. Tempers flaring up here at Palmerston North early on. Plenty of feeling out there. Well, I just wonder if this is a ploy from Great Britain, maybe to try and up unsettle the Kiwi side. Obviously, it's something that can unsettle sides and really distract them from what they're out there to do. 
Let's have a look on the CRC replay there. As we see Matthew Rich taking the ball up. And nothing in this really. Goulding going in with the tackle. A bit of a high one, but nothing too serious there. Matthew fighting to get up. Maybe he said something. A bit of a push and shove. And... Well, we know what halfbacks are like. The penalty is going against Great Britain. Penalty to New Zealand. Nil all the score. Here's a shoot. So no score in the match so far. And Grant Young is 10 from halfway. Graham Ennisley will be keeping a close eye on Bobby Goulding and Matthew Rich, two of the best competitors in the International League, no doubt about that. An early flare-up. Both sides will have to settle down, and now it's Great Britain inside the 10 metres again. Well, Great Britain very eager to get up and meet New Zealand on the advantage line as they take the ball up. But look on the CRC replay here as you see them. Well, they are in front of the referee. Not too bad, but they are well in front. So again, it's the Kiwis inside the Lions red zone. Young. Lions thought the ball may have been a shade forward. Play on, though. Now it's Namu. Showed it to Iro. Rich up from fullback. Taken around the legs, though, by Andy Farrell. Tebu at dummy half. Pongia. Quentin Pongia. Only eight metres out with a couple of tackles remaining. New Zealand is slow to get on the board last week as far as tries go. Can they score the first four-pointer tonight? Now it's Iro. Tony Iro. He calls Hoppy on the inside. Hoppy got away from one, but he's held up about one metre out. Final tackle coming up as Ruben Wiggy takes it. Out it goes to Jones. Jones to Namu. Long ball. It's reached from fullback. It's about three on one. They throw the dummy and they butchered it. It looked to be a try out wide. I think it was Barnett that cut back inside and the line survived. Well, John Boney, a try begging there. Yeah, I, th I thought they tried to use the space a little bit too quickly with a couple of cutout passes. I felt it would have gone better through the hands, but uh, Great Britain defence, they spread very well and uh, covered most options. They certainly covered the inside pass. Yeah, that's one thing Great Britain are, are good at is their cover defence. They do scramble well. And here's that kick we were talking about, John Money earlier on. Matthew Rich standing up in the line, and Great Britain obviously seen that. Did you go and speak to them earlier on today? <laughs> Inside info. Well, it's a great way to pick up an extra easy 60 metres. And it is the Kiwis down. 30 metres out from their own line. Young. Already been very impressed with Brad Young. In that last set of six, he took the ball up twice. So he's certainly getting in there and working hard. Now it's Pogia to Iro. Charging into the defence. Too much traffic there for him. He's eight from halfway. Another penalty goes to the Kiwis. Right, 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 right. I'm talking to the captain, please. Yes, Andy Farrell is now talking to the referee. On the CRC replay, we can see Great Britain well in front. They're very eager to get up and tackle. Graham Ennisley telling them not to move off the 10 metre mark until the ball is actually played. Dennis Betts had a bit to say to the referee there as well. Dennis, the most senior forward out there. 29 test matches now for the 27-year-old. Now it's Jones. Kearney wrapped up, ball and all over the top was Cunningham. Underneath was young Paul Skullport. Jones at dummy half. Namu. Now it's Tyron Smith. Eru. And Grant Young, here he is again, taking the bomb. Almost in front of the uprights, nil all the score. Jones works to the blind side. Calls Namu on the inside, now it's Tyron Smith. Still a couple of tackles remaining, more pressure on the Lions defensive line. Eru! Didn't quite get to the line, still one tackle remaining. 
punches at dummy half. And it goes to Jones. Jones kicking for the corner. Hoppy's got a great catch. He couldn't control it. No try. Well, let's have a look at the CRC replay. Great stuff from Stacey Jones. He saw out wide. There was no one home. All Sean Hoppy had to do was catch the ball. Oh, no. So close and yet so far. Another let off for the Lions. It remains nil all. Cunningham at dummy half. Betts finds his second row partner, Sculthorpe. Harris. He brings Spruce up from fullback. Just on the halfway mark, Goulding. Harris. Taken by Ruben Wicky, but he got the pass out the back door back to Sculthorpe. And that's a good set of six from Great Britain. They've worked it out from their own line, and 10 metres over halfway. Now it's Goulding with the bomb. Ridge waits for it. Powell charges down on him, and Ridge is very good under pressure, no doubt about that. Now it's Hoppy. Yes, they're certainly putting a lot of pressure on Matthew Root to CRC replay shows. Great tackle there. But you know, putting in that early kick, John, I think that's put Matthew in a... will put him in two minds whether to stay back now or to stay up. It's, it's got to be a good play from Great Britain, hasn't it? Yeah, it has pushed him back a little bit, but I think uh, the thing that the referee's having a little bit of trouble with, particularly with the Great Britain side, is that they're moving off the mark particularly quickly. They did that good in the first test and got right up and got well into the... Uh, into the into the Kiwi attacking side, and uh, he wants them to wait back tonight until the ball's been played. Now it's Iro, right in front of Dwayne Mann. Plenty of feeling out there still, Dwayne. Yes, plenty of sting in the tackles, and yes, the uh, Great Britain side having a bit of problem in slowing down this Kiwi attack. They the Kiwis, what they do do in their favour is they fall on their stomach, get up quickly, and play the ball. Great Britain, uh, you know, they're getting themselves offside because they can't slow down that play the ball area. Territory. New Zealand dominating 52% of it. Possession game, New Zealand's way 65 to 35. But they haven't been able to convert that possession into points so far. Farrell takes them on out by him. Taken there by Timo and also Tyron Smith. Now it's Betts, the inside pass to Redlinski. To the blind, they work it. O'Connor from the Wigan club back to Cunningham. They're standing flat-footed, and Betts, I don't think the pass was meant for him, but he did well to control it. Yeah, it's one thing about Great Britain. They love keeping the ball alive. They play exciting sort of football and really try and push the pass, and it's good to watch. Anthony Sullivan with no room to move on the left wing. So the final tackle coming up. Goulding got it to Powell. Powell will put it on the toe. And Ridge is going to allow it to run into touch a couple of metres out from the corner flag. So we're going to see the scrum pack down 10 metres out from the New Zealand line. It's nil all at Palmerston North. Puts the ball into the scrum. Yeah, that was a nice little option there taken by the Great Britain side. Uh, a little bit of pressure on Goulding on the last tackle and he decided to run it down the blind and uh, Powell got in a little bit of space which resulted in quite a good kick into the corner. Now it is Tyron Smith. Tackles made. Great Britain have had to do the most tackling so far, but not much in that statistic. 20 from halfway. Iro taken by his opposite number, Betts and Cunningham. Still very tight in the fours, I believe. It's very even in the front row and the fours. But that man there, Stephen Cooney, really does need some backup when he takes the ball up. He seems to be going one out, and he's a tremendous ball player. Always promotes the ball, looking to offload, and, and a lot of the time has nobody there backing him up. Mistake by Kearney on that occasion, as we see on the uh, replay. Stephen losing control of the football. The scrumble packed down. So it's the Lions inside New Zealand Territory. Not a bad position to start New Zealand six from Powell, Sullivan. Well, he's put it down. Timu takes the tackle. Hoppy. 
Let's have a look at the CRC replay. I think it was Ruben Wicky who come across there. Fair enough, knocked the ball out. Now it's Iro. Standing, allowed to offload back to Eru. Tongia from a standing start. Yes, Greg, very much like a game of chess at the moment. Both teams wanting to push the pass. The Kiwis will have to watch their marker defence. Funny enough, the biggest guy of all, Grant Young, is the one who really looks good at marker defence. Probably a little bit of help needed from Stacey Jones, Sidiru and uh, Jean Namu. This is Grant Young now and again. He uh, gets a quick play the ball in. Eru steals another eight metres. Hoppy at dummy half. Now it's Namu to Jones. Standing wide, kicking with the left foot for Richard Barnett. He was interfered with, but he's not going to win the race. End of touch, in goal. What a good option there by Tony Oro, showing some great skills with the left-footed kick. Wow, the big second row ranging out wide. He's got a great offload. I haven't seen him kick for a long time, but with the left foot. Now the race is on. Richie Barnett came all so close, but great cover from Great Britain. Their fallback, of course. Stewart got there in time. Now it is another mistake by Great Britain. So in two sets of six, they've coughed up the football early in the tackle count, and the coach Phil Lada will not be happy with that. Now it is Grant Young again. He only knows one way, and straight ahead, no doubt about that. Yeah, well, he's going to give any team that he plays for a great go forward, and uh, and as Dwayne mentioned earlier, he does fall on his stomach, gets up, plays the ball particularly uh, quickly. You know, the referee's working very hard to keep the sides back 10 metres. Now it's Timu. Great Britain cover got across there. Back it goes to Smith. He had to accelerate from a standing start. was an easy target. Now it's Kearney. Inside pass to Wiki. Wiki. To Poggia, his Canberra teammate, 21 metres out, still nil all in the second test. Now it's Damu. There's the bomb. Where are the chases? A bit of pressure on back there for Spruce. He put it down. Who's got it? Play on. And almost over the line. Oh, so close for Tony Iro. Penalty. He's got the marker for chasing up before the ball was played. The captain, Andy Farrell, is not happy. Well, I'd like to see that one again because the ball has to touch the ground before you can leave. Now it's touched. Well, he might have been standing just in front of the line, but... Well, they're all offside by a mile. There are eight of them under the post. And, uh, you know, gaps all over the place out wide. So Matthew Rich will have a shot at goal from right in front as the referee tells Andy Farrell that his players are offside and he's not going to tolerate it. 18 and a half minutes gone in the second test. As Dwayne Mann said, it's been a real... Well, why are the smiles on Matthew Rich's face? Does he know that a record is underway? He's done it! He rewrites the record books. Dan's wife will be sitting in his lounge room in Auckland congratulating Matthew Rich for breaking the 40-year-old record. 2-0. It's the new New Zealand Test points record holder. 134 points for him now. And more importantly, I guess, and I'm sure Matthew will be reading it this way, the Kiwis are on the board of long last. Yes, I'm sure he wasn't smiling about those points. He probably wouldn't even know what's happening. I think someone said something to him and he thought it was quite funny. Greg, the only bloke I've seen kick better with either foot would be Dean Lonergan. Mind you, he was horizontal at the time doing the Lonergan shuffle. <laughs> he will never live that down from 1991. <laughs> Penalty to Great Britain this time. An infringement by the New Zealanders in the play. The ball grabbing at one of the legs. Yes, if you struggle to get up, I'm sure the referee will give you the penalty. He's in a line all over them there. I, I think the uh, Great Britain side would be quite happy to be only down 2-0 at this stage. I felt that, uh, you know, that there was almost a sin bin, sin bin penalty on that, uh, on that occasion up in front of the post. I think they gave away two points to uh, stop the try being scored. There was certainly a try on had uh, New Zealand spread the ball to the left or to the right. Yes, and it's something that you coaches employ quite often as the professional penalty, isn't it? You'd rather give away two than six. 
Well, another handling mistake by the Lions. They're putting a lot of pressure on themselves early on here. This time it's Dennis Vets as we have another look at it. The pass was a good one, but Dennis put it down, which is unlike him. Now there's a chance over on the far side. Great inside pass. Namu trying to link up with his outside men, and now he loses it. That was pretty good cover over there by the Lions because they were looking very dangerous again. Namu a little disappointed with that. Yeah, CRC replay shows Tyron Smith out wide. And of course, Gene very dangerous with a bit of room to move, but it was knocked out of his hands. Handling errors going against the lines. Both sides got to settle down really and complete their sets of six. Get a bit of a roll on. Now it's Alan Hunt. Well, it's been a while since the lines have completed a set of six. I think that little blind side's working for them too when they, they look to shift it but then maybe hit the blind side because you've got to be very careful on defence. You sometimes go to the blind side and can get lazy and make sure you move up. Yes, perhaps uh, Frank Endicott has had a look at Alan Hunt and, and found him wanting a couple of times on that flank, so they've purposely set out to attack that side. Lines into good field position as Terry O'Connor takes on the Kiwi defence. He's 28 metres out from the line. Gilding picking up power, but that's not a great pass. Came off the legs, play on. Well, it's not often you see international footballers not playing to the referee. It came off the legs on that occasion, and now it's a handover. So, again, an opportunity goes begging for the bombs, the Lions to put a little bit of a pressure on with the bomb. Well, now Darryl, this is Young. Daryl Powell there really just gave himself up to the referee. Tackles made. Well, it'll be an interesting st statistic because the handling areas will be certainly putting more pressure on the lines 86 tackles now they've had to make compared to only 67 by new zealand just two points in the second test now it's kearney with the big step stephen kearney through again no support for the big warrior second rower there's the kick and the chase by sid Aru. spruce has it and he's taken penalty Penalty to Great Britain, Sid going on with the tackle. He made a second attempt at him as the ruling. Yes, that was a good call. Let's have a look on the CRC replay there. Sid is showing all the scores. Now, Dennis Best does not have to get out of your road. He stood his ground. Sid was probably held off a little bit. You just see he was pushed back into the end goal by Sean Hoppy. Good call from referee. Penalty's 5-4 to New Zealand now. And Terry O'Connor is 30 metres out from the line. Betts... Good tackle right around the bootlaces by Young. Here's the other front rower, Broadbent. Great, Great Britain making some good progress with their forwards, but yes, Easton Harris needs to get in there and help Bobby Goulding with a few options as we look at him now with the ball. He really needs to get in there and start mixing it up a bit more. Daryl Powell, the most capped player in the number four jersey, most capped player in this t Great Britain team with 30 tests. Gilding, looking for touch, Ridges back there, good position, and they're storming down on him, but it was a pretty easy sidestep for Rich to get away from Sullivan. Geez, a great competitor, little Bobby Gilding, he kicked that ball, he was the second tackler up there, and once again, no pressure put on him, he had all the time in the world to make his kick. Yeah, just with that kicking game, I watched in the first test where he kicked the ball over the sideline a lot, and I think uh, I think that's a better option, that kick that stays in the field of play and traps the opposition deep inside that last 10 metres. I think in the first test, though, they had uh, some points on the board, and they were probably trying to kill a bit of time. Come on, guys, come on. Different options tonight, though. They're trailing by two, the Lions. And a strong hit up by Young. Kearney, switch your play, Jones, Namu stepping, double round with Jones to Wiki. He can't get away from Sullivan. Now it's Ridge. No real pressure on the Kiwi skipper. And he finds touch over on the far side, the 30 metre mark. The Lions end of the field. So still 2-0.
players taking plenty of time to get into the scrum as well. Brent has been a fairly torrid uh, start to the second test as Joe Vangana warms up, so some changes could be on the way. And uh, Greg, I noticed that Adrian Morley, first replacement, the man who was at the centre of all that controversy at the end of the match last week, he comes on. Yes, I think Joe Vangana, Joe Vangana is a real, uh, the sort of player to bring on at this time. He's an impact player. He'll take two and three tacklers with him, so there's got to be some gaps out wide because uh, he's a strong runner, Joe. Great asset, and, and what a reserve bench, really, the Kiwis have got. You know, if you look at him and Mark Ellis, two tremendous players to bring on. Yes, Brett, and I believe they do have to use that bench a, a lot earlier. It would be good to see the likes of Mark Ellis get on. At the moment, he's a bit like Alice in Wonderland. He's been on the, on the sideline that often. OK, well, it's the Lions now. Fitz, great run, Dennis Fitz. Over it goes to Alan Hunt. And Hunt's going to score between the sticks. What a reply by the Great Britain Lions. Dennis Fitz opened them up out wide. And Alan Hunt, the St. Helens flyer, had a clear run to the line. 4-2 with the kick to come from right and well, the CRC replay will show out wide. New Zealand really found wanting. Great stuff from Dennis Best. Now, that decoy runner there, that took the flies off Dennis. They all watched him. And of course, this man here, he's got plenty of pace and goes in under the post. And that's a real run against the play because New Zealand were dominating early on. But Dennis Betts, he's having a tremendous series. He had a crack of a match last week. I think he's one player you've got to back up. And Alan Hutt knows that. And this guy in the clear will score every time. Well, they've come up with a lot of errors, Great Britain, but this time they've come good. Alan Hunt's shown plenty of toe, and he's happy about this one. Why wouldn't he be happy? Really, they've been behind the eight ball a bit so far in the test match, and then they open them up. 28 years of age, his third test cap for Great Britain, Alan Hunt. Gilding, his first shot at goal. He doesn't miss them from there. There's the extra two. So it is the Lions who have weathered the storm so far in the first half, leading by six points to two. Four points, the difference now. Just the one replacement on there for Great Britain. It's number 17, Chris Joint. Late change to the programs, and Joint is on there in 17 and not Morley. The restart by Gilding. And of course, John Marty, to me, that looked like an old Warriors move. Is that right? Yeah, it certainly did look very familiar. It looked like a, a move that uh, put Tia Rapati over under the post from a scrum play that, uh, that the Warriors used a fair bit last season. So uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the Kiwis knew what was coming. Dennis Betts certainly knew what was happening. <laughs> Uh, he's a great player that can run into a hole, Dennis Betts, and that's one of his strengths, and, uh, you know, he certainly busted him up there. Territory going Great Britain's way now, 53% to 47. Possession still favouring New Zealand, but they're behind on the scoreboard, and they've made a mistake there, but knocked back, and now they knock it on. And it's Radlitsky, and this is a vital time for the New Zealanders now. They're out 10 minutes to go before half-time. They have to hold the lines out. And the Lions certainly have picked it up a gear. But that's a good tackle by Sean Hoppy on Anthony Sullivan. Yeston Harris at dummy half. Here's the replacement. This is Chris Joint from St. Helens, his 11th test match. O'Connor running to the advantage line, 10 metres out. Pressure on this New Zealand defensive line. A planned move here, and Farrell charging into them. The gap soon closed, though. Still a couple of tackles remaining. Now it's Harris. He'll throw the dummy. He'll try and step his way through. I think you'll find Hoppy's under a bit of pressure here. I think they're coming his way. OK, there's the one-pointer. They'll take one. And that's now seven points to two. Bobby Goulding with the field goal. So five points of difference now. And I guess one's better than nothing. Yes, but they were hot on attack here. Let's have a look on the CRC replay out wide. I think where it should have gone, there were plenty of players there, especially the winger in the centres. But, well, as you said, one's better than nothing. Well, I don't think the one point, you know, was the right decision. They should have spun the ball more to the left. 
Uh, you know, perhaps that was a problem last week where the British tried to shut the game down too early with those touch finders. They really need a lot more points to uh, get themselves out of the Kiwis' reach. Seven points to two. It's been pretty impressive, the Great Britain side, the last two times that, that they've been inside that last 20 metres, though, and they've uh, completed their sets. They've come up with points, and I'd say they'd be playing pretty confidently from now on. Barnett, the inside pass from Bridge. Good run by Barnett. He's got support on the inside of Stacey Jones. The line struggling to get back onside. The Kiwis looking for a quick play the ball. Now it's Bridge up from fullback. Bridge taken by joint Betts is in there as well Dennis is probably saying to Matthew Ridge we might be playing together in 97 but we're foes in 96 at this stage it's great Britain going with a few high shots but it's all part of the game and really they're just playing it nice and physical trying to upset New Zealand now it's Iroh turns it inside to Wiki he was taken by Powell underneath O'Connor over the top. There's the bomb across field by Stacey Jones. Taken over there. Tyron Smith has it. And that will be the sixth tackle and the handover. So again, the Lions keep their try line intact. Once again, New Zealand opting for the kick near the line as we see a lost ball from Great Britain. That's a great tackle from. Young, the big front row, he's having a tremendous game out there tonight. Let's have a look on the CRC replay. Alan Hunt takes it up there. Just look at Grant Young, he drives him in. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, Grant Young, outstanding, outstanding play. As long as uh, also Chris Rudlinski get in across there, doing some great cover work with Stuart Bruce. So it's the New Zealanders down by five, and it's Timu. Tackle 20 metres out. Handling errors against the Lions, 5-4. Hoppy looking for a bit of action early in the tackle count. 12 metres out. As Eru waits for it. Big line-up out to the left. And Jones will want to put it through the hands. A double round with Pongia back to Jones. And Iroh's out wide. He turns it on the inside. The cover read it pretty well, though, as Kearney plays it. They still work the blind side. Tyrant Smith takes it on. Radlinski. Hunt and also Betts claimed him. Now it's Jones, Nabu, Iro, showing it on the inside, getting it up to Timu. Timu with the dummy! Inside it goes and that's the try! Ruben Wicke scores for New Zealand. That was great work by the backs. And Tony Iro, the second rower, was in there to lend a hand as well. Seven points to six, the kick to come. Yes, good work from the Kiwis there on the CRC replay. Putting them right across to one side, then using the full width of the field. Now, Tony Oro out wide. He's got tremendous skills, that little offload. Two decoy runners. And John Timmy, well, he's got a great step. Always comes back inside. And Ruben Wicke backed him up well. The two centres played well. But put the try down to this man, Tony Oro. He took two defenders out. And really opened the gaps there for John Timu. And all he really had to do was look inside. And his centre partner, Ruben Wicke, was running onto it. And that's a great try to Ruben. And justifying his call up to the starting 13, replacing Richie Blackmore, who's on the bench. So five test tries. And Matthew Ridge with the conversion. It's there. The Kiwis have the lead again. Eight points to seven. About five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Lights taking over here at the Palmerston North Showgrounds as we wait for the restart. And as they signal his time on again. Yeah, you've got to go back. That was great play from the Kiwis, but you've got to go back to that mistake by Stuart Spruce on the first tackle trying to bring the ball out of his 20 metres. Big time rugby league, you just can't make those fundamental errors when you're in your own 20. Yeah, New man on there for Great Britain, Steve Malloy is on for Terry O'Connor. Yeah, that's one thing we talked about, John, was ball security, really, in your own 22, in that danger zone. You must hold on to the ball, and really, you should only offload if it's really on. Great Britain sometimes, well, they like to push that pass. We know they're exciting players, but they've got to know when to hold it. As if we have a look at tackles made, wow, Great Britain 127 to New Zealand 94. 
It's going to burn up a bit of petrol. Yeah, I think it's more a case of when Grant Young hits you, you stay hit. Now, the referee trying to separate Tony Iroh and Dennis Betts. The penalty will go to Great Britain. Yes, we have a look at Dennis Betts out wide. Runs onto it beautifully. Now Tony Iroh coming over top. Well, certainly connected with him. Dennis Betts got straight up. Maybe it'd be better to lie down for a little while, but it's an old front rowers trick. <laughs> well, I think Dennis wants to get on with it, and it's the Lions now working themselves into pretty good position. 22 metres out from the line. Eight points to seven. It's New Zealand leading the Lions, Yeston Harris. Inside pass to Powell, but Stephen Kearney was there waiting for him. Harris hit down half. Broad bent. There's no way through there for the front rower. Cunningham to Farrell, the skipper. Holding up the pass. Beautiful ball to Bentz. But good defence also by the New Zealanders who wrapped him up ball and all. There was a half a chance there if Bentz could have freed the hands. Now it is Harrison, long ball over the far side to Redlinski, the kick, the chase, but Rich is back there. And he just manages to stay in the field of play. Taking his time with the tackle as well, Matthew Rich. Well, let's have a look on the CRC replay. Once again, you don't have to get out of the player's row, but good cover from Matthew Rich there. Very sound at the back. Well, the Lions look very good, don't they? They, they play with great spirit, and uh, this morning they were very relaxed and confident going into this game, and they're here for the full 80 minutes. Ten out from the road line, New Zealand. Penalty. He was looking for the quick play of the ball, Quentin Pongia. Yeah, that's a real piggyback, really, Great Britain. They can't afford to do that on the third tackle. Good work from Quinton Pongi though, looking for the quick play of the ball. The referee's already indicated he'll give the penalty if you work hard for it. Steve Malloy, the man, analyzed the replacement. The British bench looking on now, Barry John Maiden, Carl Hammond. There's a planned move there from, from New Zealand. Now it's Andy Farrell and trying to link up with the men on the outside. And Ruben Wicky lost the ball, an inside pass from Grant Young. Now Great Britain are hot on attack. Yes, it's Harris. Out to Powell. Powell calling Sullivan inside. Anthony Sullivan will play at about five metres out. Getting close to half time. The Lions looking to go in with the lead. They trail by one at the moment. And Bet starts to range wide. Shows it on the inside to Chris Redlinski. Redlinski gets it back to Sullivan. They keep it alive. Stu Spruce is up from fullback. Ducked underneath Spruce. Got it out to Betts. There's the try. The Lions are in. Dennis Betts has scored for Great Britain. The Kiwis couldn't hold it out just before half time. It's now 11 points to eight. Wow, great try from Great Britain. We'll have a look on the CRC replay. There might have been a hit of a forward pass there. Let's have a look, though. Dennis Bett, he's having a whale of a game out there out wide. He took them on there. I thought this man here was wrapped up, but was able to go on with it. Now, I thought the play should have been stopped here. Here we go. Dennis Bett runs onto that pass. Now, was that a forward pass? Well, you can make up your own mind. A little bit forward to me, but Dennis Betts is going to claim it. Let's have another look on the CRC replay. Great Britain have kept the ball alive. Tremendous work. There's Dennis. He's moving back. You can see him in the back of play. Now, here he goes. He turns around. Well, we can't quite see, but knowing Dennis, we'll give it to him. It's on the board. So, Dennis Betts, the 27-year-old, in his 29th test match, gets the try. Gilding. One from one. He's also... Landed a field goal as well. He's done it. There's another two points right on the stroke of half time. So here at the Palmerston North Showgrounds, it is the Lions that go to the break, leading by five, 13 points to eight.
as we have another look at this one here Spruce did very well didn't he to get away from three defenders he should have been claimed there the movement should have been stopped and that was a forward pass for mine but it's on the board and so it is now half time here 13 points to eight the Lions have the lead moment tonight for Matthew Ridge kicking his first penalty to give New Zealand the lead by two points to nil and of course more importantly he is now the leading test point scorer and that's a major feat but behind the scenes I'm sure Matthew is a bit disappointed because once again it's the Lions leading at half time. Well it's been a tremendous effort really from both sides but Great Britain have hung in there and hung in there in defence and really showed a lot of courage and, and really when you look at the mistakes that uh, both sides made well New Zealand made a mistake in their own 22 on the first tackle and were made to pay by Great Britain scoring that try and also Great Britain copying out the ball in their 22 and of course New Zealand scored a try so it's pretty even at the first half. Okay well 13 points to 8 is the uh, score line going Great Britain's way. Territory going the Lions way but possession well 53% for New Zealand 47% for uh, Great Britain but they've had to make about 20 more tackles the Lions and that could take out some petrol as they get down to full time. Okay here we go with some of the tries from the first half now and uh, Dennis... Two sports action at Palmerston North. The Lions are out there. We're just waiting for the Kiwis to take to the park for the second half of the second test. Let's go sideline now to Brendan Telfer and Dwayne Mann. Well, th well, thank you, Greg. Once again, the Kiwis, Dwayne Mann, are going to have to play catch-up football in the second half. I imagine Frank Endicott would have been pretty happy with the first 30 minutes, but he wouldn't have been too pleased about that defensive record in the last 10. No, they're going to have to stay alive at their market defence and stop this Great Britain team from uh, getting over the top of them. But uh, the Great Britain side playing with a lot of character and, uh, and a lot of support here from their own fans who have travelled down here. OK, the support will have to carry on in the second 40 because the Lions need to hold on now to keep the series alive. Dennis Betts, Matthew Ridge, a key player in that first half as well. Bobby Goulding directing traffic again in the first half for the Lions. Graham Ennisley just about ready to signal time on in the second 40. have played 90 test matches Great Britain have won 57 New Zealand 30 they've drawn three now this is Quentin Pongia what do you think the talk was in the dressing rooms at half time Brent Todd well I'm sure they were told early on in those tackle counts to stop coughing up the ball as we saw both teams have scored from early cough ups but New Zealand really got to concentrate now on ball security and I think Great Britain well New Zealand looked as though they were, had all the position in the first half and Great Britain have come away uh, pretty even. So, you know, it's anyone's test match. But once again, we see if you're prepared to fight on the ground, you'll get the penalty. And Great Britain can't afford to give away silly penalties like this and really giving New Zealand great opportunities to work their way out of their own half. You see Tony Arrow there, Arrow trying to fight to get up. Held down by Steve Malloy touch. and the New Zealanders. Fine touch. Now this is Kearney. Jones waits for the dummy half to Nambu. Smith taken by Powell. Quentin Pong here, the switch of play with Tony Iro. 30 yard from the Lions line. Namu. Jones. Here's Stephen Kearney. Offloading to Eru, Hoppy. They're putting the, hand, the ball through the hands, but going nowhere at the moment. The Kiwis. Greg, the British still very unhappy at halftime about the refereeing, talking to some of the members of the bench there. And Phil Lana wants the error rate cut down in their own half. And the last words he said to them after leaving the dressing room, remember the second half in Auckland last Friday night. Yes, that was the one that got away from them last Friday. Can they hold on here as Namu puts a tester up early on. Spruce is there and takes it well. And they're offside, the New Zealanders. Gee, that was a big take under pressure. And now Spruce takes a quick tap. 
and he's back to the 20 meter mark wow that was a gutsy take from Stuart Spruce I tell you so much courage he had courage he had players coming down on him and the word from the Kiwi uh, change of Red Frank Endicott, unhappy with some of the errors being made by the Kiwi side. He believes those errors have uh, cost them tries, and uh, he'd like them to stiffen up their attack and also kick a bit more early. Come back, please, James. Come on. Get up in. Eight from halfway. Harris. This is Chris Joint. Up over the 50 mark. Gilding. He gets the kick in, into open spaces. Ridge has been sent back to pick it up, only a couple of metres out from his own line. Plenty of chases there as well. Gilding, as well as Powell and Harris. And that's a sign of a really enthusiastic side, a committed side. Oh, the as good as your chase, as we see a mistake from New Zealand. Richie Barnett put it down. And I'm sure at half time both coaches would have uh, said, hey, you know, let's cut down on any errors in our own footy meter line. And, uh, and, and, and there we see the first first error from uh, the Kiwi side. They've come up with a bad mistake. Will they pay for it? 13 points to eight. Five apiece of handling errors. As Bruce is up from fullback, trying to get on the outside, flirting with the touchline, stays in the field of play. It's Alan Hunt, one of the try scorers in the first half at dummy half. Harris, they're flat footed, they spread it wide now. Radlinski throws a dummy. Couldn't find a way through. Taken by Kearney. They keep working it through the left. The double round, Betts is there trying to offload he has two or three kiwi defenders in there to shut him down the kiwi defensive line holding here as malloy plays it now it's goulding farrell miss out pass it's on the ground back to spruce got away from one two 20 meters out final tackle coming up now Where's the bomb? Yesterday Harris has put up a good one. It's lying loose on the ground. It's been knocked on. Knocked on by the lines. And so we'll have a changeover about 10 metres out from the Kiwis line. So they didn't pay for that mistake, but they've got a bit of work to do to run it out of their own red zone. Well, it's always tough now working it out here. This is where the front rowers have got to get in there. The forwards have got to dominate and do those hard yards. Just have a look on the CRC replay. Great Britain keeping the ball alive out wide just couldn't connect there otherwise it was going to be nearly a three on two situation they may have got in but this kick here too on stacy jones well very lucky new zealand now they try and spread it wide as wiki has taken 30 out from the line i think guys like stacy jones and gene Nomi, they need to get hold of that ball and really have a go themselves because they can get through those half gaps and we were talking about it a little bit earlier on too great britain really have 11 men defending because bobby goulding stands in behind the line and also the fullback so there's 11 guys out there and here's stacy with the ball he needs to run with it the inside pass to wiki taken by chris joint that's the halfway mark the kick by namu spruce will get a pretty good bounce 10 out from his own line he's got some speed to burn spruce just loses his footing as he tried the fencing goose step over on the far side and he's hurt himself in that tackle as i think he may have caught stephen kearney's knee as he fell there let's have a look on the crc replay there spruce down the sideline he has got plenty of pace yes he ran into stephen's knees Which is over the Great Britain players have got a lot to say to the referee out there. A little bit of frustration setting in. Well, the Kiwis very lucky to get away with that uh, error un under their own post by Richard Barnett. And the, the Great Britain side are looking very good. So it's 13 points to eight at Palmerston North. Guthrie territory. So now we settle down to a bit of football again. The Kiwis lead the series 1-0. The third test is in Christchurch next week, seven days from now. And Joe Vungana gets his first touch. Ten metres inside Great Britain territory. Kearney. 
first half tackles Kearney made 14 ahead of Young and Eru but they were 13 beauties by Grant Young Rich thrown into the turf he's got it, he's got it. bad pass from dummy half Namu has to go back and clean up but now he's knocked it on well this is fundamental errors by both sides they're under a heck of a lot of pressure out there Yes, I think it's going to be the first side that can settle down and play football there. A little bit of frustration sitting in. They can't let this middling get to them. Both sides have got to concentrate with their minds back on the job. So that's the halfway mark now for the Lions. viewers watching this through B Sky B in Britain and Foxtel across Australia as well as on two sports action we hope you're enjoying all this pretty tense stuff at the moment well it is the Lions still leading by five 13 to 8 28 meters out now it's building there's the bomb across field it's for Hoppy's wing he's left it behind but knocked back and his play on and so Matthew Rich has it he cleaned it up taken by Goulding 12 out from his own line Hoppy at dummy half taken ball and all on a good tackle over there by Hunt yeah let's have a look at the South Sea replay there Matthew Ridge once again cleaning up but Bobby Goulding well, he's a little competitor he's really into everything out there he kicked it he made the tackle yeah, it's interesting you see how, how a lot of players handle pressure and this game's really heated up and uh, I am impressed with the way Bobby Goulding's handled it. You know, I coached Bobby when he was a younger player at Wigan and, uh, and he didn't handle the pressure real well. Here's a chance for New Zealand with and Wiki. Got away from Spruce. Goulding is back there. He can't control Wiki. And Ruben Wiki has got a double. For New Zealand, just one point in it with a kick to come. That is why change and put him into the starting 13. Ruben Wickey, what a try. Yes, they're all coming from a switch of the play down the blind side. Let's have a look on the CRC replay. Ruben Wickey fell off. Come off a great ball and really, what a great individual try. A little step and really the Great Britain fullback was stepped inside and out. Dennis Betts also making the chase, but Ruben Wickey. Now this pass here, well, Stephen Kearney Tremendous pass from Stephen Kearney. We've said if you back this man up, he will give you some good service. He's certainly done that. Reuben Wookie followed him up. Now he had a bit of work to do, Reuben. Just watch the step on him. Spruce has stepped inside out. Reuben Wookie, well, he's a strong defender, but he's also a strong attacker. Got plenty of pace, and that is a great try for New Zealand. So Wookie has six test tries. That's waved away. Rare miss by Matthew Rich, so there is still one point in it. Great Britain 13, New Zealand 12. What a test match we have on our hands now. Exciting stuff, John Boney. Yeah, technically uh, Spruce was in trouble once he started to back away from Wiki. What a fullback's got to do in that situation is attack the player coming towards him. And uh, once Spruce started to go backwards, he was in trouble. The crowd thought that was a knock on. The referee said it came off the body, so it's play on. Lucky escaped by the Lions. They're 12 metres out from their own line now. Yeah, it was a great ball from Stephen Kearney. Noticing that Justin Harris was up in the line and really just a case of a big man on a small man was able to get around him and pop that lovely ball back to Ruben Wookie. Cunningham with dummy half. One hope to get at the end of the match. Oh, great hit here. Finished him off like a Mack truck. Let's have a look at Chris Joyne. He's a big lad too. Well, Joe Vargana lined him up. It's one thing Great Britain have to, don't have to do. They don't have to play catch-up football. They must remember they are leading this game. He's the only one who really, as time ticks down, they're going to have to push the pass and really get in front. Let's just hope the Great Britain don't shut up shop as early as they did last week. Now it's Namu, the inside pass to Timu. Out of one. dummy half the territory going New Zealand's way 58 to 42 position going New Zealand's way as well 
but they're behind by one point on the scoreboard as Sidero makes another eight or nine metres from dummy half. 25 and a half minutes remaining. Joe Vangana ducked under a high one. Really, New, Zealand, the ball. New Zealand have got some great strike players. If you look at their bench, I think it won't be long before Mark Ellis comes on. He is a try scorer, a sensational player. Really got a big future in the game, and I'm sure Frank Endicott will try and use him as soon as possible. Great ball from Logan Swan, the young man, to Stacey Jones. Arrow from Dummy Hart trying to step his way through. Inside it goes to Jones. They pop it out the back door, and now there's a knock on there. feed into the scrum well great britain should get the feed into the scrum let's have a look on the crc replay stacy jones takes it in now did matthew rich knock this on fit well could be great britain knocked it on i think he's going to give uh, the kiwis the feed great attacking opportunity jones puts it in well nami went the other way now rich tries to make something of it Bit of a mix-up there between the halves. But they've got a full set of six to keep the pressure on. And it is Barnett trying to catch them napping. He'll play it as Ridge waits for it at dummy half, calling for a quick play of the ball. Jones. The Lions defence was up very quick on that occasion, just shutting the movement down. Namu fumble there but they clean it up and now Kearney keeps it alive back to Namu over to Timu and Timu it's a penalty Timu knocked it on Tyron Smith picked it up in an offside position and so Great Britain come away with a penalty that's yes, good call there from Graham Annesley let's have a look on the CRC replay out wide to John Timu now let's have a look a knock on and Tyron Smith there he is he's offside as he picked it up well, the Kiwis have picked up the tempo of this game and able to stand and offload plenty of walls in that sequence and, uh, you know, danger signs of Great Britain don't start putting them on the deck. Malloy. Almost to the halfway. Number, number 16, Charles Hammond on for Great Britain. Chance here. Barry John Mather is on there. Number 14, the Western Reds player. Well, this is a good set of play by the Lions that got from their own red zone. And now they're attacking the New Zealand line with a quick play of the ball. Andy Farrell, Barry John Mather, what a ball and all tackle. What a ball and all tackle there. That was Logan Swan, the kick of the chase by Bobby Goulding. And it's going to go dead. So we'll have a restart back on the 20-meter mark. I think I saw the touch judge almost put his hand, flag up here for a high tackle, but then he put it down quickly. Well, that was another good call from Graham. And was either the referee. It wasn't a high tackle, but Bobby Gordon, I just wonder whether it was on out wide there instead of a little kick in behind. Good play from Stacey Jones to let that ball run over uh, in the uh, in goal area and give them a, a, a better chance of running it out from the 20-meter area. Joe Vangana. I think the Kiwi go forward has got a little bit better in the last five minutes because the uh, the Great Britain defence has stopped coming up as good as they were coming up before and uh, we're starting to get them on the back foot a little bit and the uh, the Kiwi attack, attack does look a little better. We have our CRC, New Zealand man of the match at the end of this test match. Wiki already with the double, he's had a strong game. Final tackle now. And Namu puts it in the air. Spruce again under a bit of pressure, but takes it well and beats one or two. Good work, Stuart Spruce from the Bradford Bulls. Well, Stuart Spruce has been very good, very safe all night under the high ball. We have a look at him here going up. Plenty of pressure from Logan Swan coming down on him. We saw him earlier on with, with that great try. He'd done the, the splits with a half pirouette and went through to score. Line breaks. New Zealand 14, Great Britain 13. Up over halfway they go the lines. 
Yes, and Harris has come to light a little bit in the last five or ten minutes as well, and he's running the ball a little more at the defensive line, and he's come up with a couple of half breaks. Christian Harris, number six, at dummy half now. Joint, Chris Joint, taken by Pongia. Final tackle, penalty. And yes. this is well and truly within Bobby Goulding's range as far as a shot at goal goes. Yeah, Stephen Kearney there, the culprit. We'll have a look on the CRC replay. Just watch his hand. Chris Joint there takes up a strong ball. Now just watch Stephen Kearney's hand. Goes in for a little tap. There it is. <laughs> you can't do that. Right in front of the ref. <laughs> so Kearney gives up the penalty. And it's a chance for Gilding to stretch the lead to three. I'll tell you what, Stephen Kearney's got a little bit of front row on him. <laughs> Still something that would frustrate a coach, a penalty like that within kicking day range. Yeah, it does, and we're just coming up to the 60-minute mark, so there's uh, fatigue starting to be a factor now, and, uh, you know, we're seeing a couple of errors. We're seeing a few more line breaks as the players become tired, and, uh, you know, the game could open up in the last in the last 20 minutes. second half he's done it it's right down the middle so it's now 15 points to 12 the Lions over the Kiwis great conditions tonight and there's the restart by the Lions Timu got away from Barry John May they're taken though by Powell we look at the New Zealand interchange bench and Richie Blackmore and Mark Ellis still there. Where do you put Ellis with Wiki and uh, Timu doing okay? Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, I think before the game's over, you need to get Ellis and Blackmore into the game, especially if they're behind. They're two players that, uh, that, that can make a break. They can create something. So I think they're two players that, uh, if they're still behind with 10 minutes to go, I think they'll both come into the match. Here's Tyron Smith. One option could be to move Wiki to lock forward give tyron smith a spell on the bench and that would put alice into the centers now it's kearney i'll tell you what Greg, if you keep up that form you might be coaching soon oh very impressive and that is into touch is it no bounces back into the field to play and mather yeah, I've been tackled. very impressed with Tyron Smith tonight. He's done well after a slight ligament damage in the first test. And uh, he's done a good job at trying to get around Daryl Powell, who uh, is under an injury cloud with a slight hamstring problem. But, uh, you know, as John said, fatigue may set in and there will be a, a few more gaps opening up. Now this is Terry O'Connor. Tackles made. They've just cracked the double century, the lines. That's going to be a telling factor in the last 10 minutes of this match. That little play there, that little inside play by Great Britain will work for them because the New Zealand both markers are chasing out, so there's going to be a hole in behind the ruck. Blackmore is out there. Malloy to the halfway mark. Tackle by Logan Swan. Now it's Goulding. There's the bomb. Well, it, uh, he was under a bit of pressure there and he didn't kick it as high as he would have liked. And so Hoppy had no real pressure on him. Well, this is a very important stage here for New Zealand. They must control the ball. They can cough it up. Just going to work this out. They're still behind, so the, in the back of their minds, they'll be thinking they must offload, try and create something. But they've still got to have ball security out there. Barnett has injured himself in that tackle and is limping away. Now it's Tyron Smith ranging wide of the ruck, taken by his opposite number, Farrell. Also Redlinski, Richie Barnett. I could see the introduction of Mark Ellis now on the right wing. They put it through the hands on the far side. Here's Blackmore. Thrown into the turf with the quick play of the ball. Now down the blind side goes Hoppy. Ellis Back is on. Field. Mark Ellis is making his way. And so is Stacey Jones. The little man. The foot on the gas. He's going to go all the way. Yes. No. Held up. Well, he was across the line. That was great defence by Great Britain to save a certain four-pointer. Yeah, let's have a look at 
the CRC replay. Stacey Jones put the petrol on him. Looked like shut the gates there as he slid over now. Great defence from Spruce. Well, we can't see if he held him up. It looks as though he has. Very, very hard to see from that shot. But if he did, that was try saving stuff from Stuart Spruce. But it's still the Kiwis on attack now as they try and get back. CRC replay out wide. Now that's the same sort of play that Dennis Best they used early on. Nobody tackled Gene Nabu. Of course, he's gone over for quite an easy try in the end. The decoy runners, though, for New Zealand, that was tremendous work from them. If you have a look, they take the defenders off. You see here, Gene travelling across those decoy runners. Well, just stood up the defence and the gap was huge. And Gene went straight through it. Yeah, great stuff here. You know, Gene Namu has got a great slide of hand and he just drifts across the field and he's got that extra kick of pace. We just see him kick in there and off he goes through a nice gap. But really the play started way back when they put pressure under Bobby Gould's kick and they're able to return the ball back in, uh, you know, in a number of sets of, tack sets of play and uh, Stacey Jones having a fine run. Richard Barnett being helped to the bench by the physiotherapist Peter Boyle. Matthew Rich about two meters in from the far touch 75 percent tonight for rich what a bad attempt it's there so now it is the new zealanders who lead by three the kiwis 18 the lions 15. yeah I, I think that was a great a great section of play with a great long run from stacy jones and uh, I still feel there's a couple more tries in this test match. It's a great game. So O'Connor uh, is there. Gene Namu with that last try for the Kiwis moves into double figures. That's his 10th test try in his 16th test match. Knocked back by Andy Farrell there. So it's play on. And yeah, this is where the experienced players on both sides will start to shine and start to lead the way because talk about pressure with 30 minutes to go both sides need to get try to, to either Great Britain get in front or New Zealand to clinch it now it's Mark Ellis playing on the wing Richard fullback Hoppy is over on the far wing just trying to pick up but Blackmore playing the centres what the rearranged lineup is in the forward pack as Richard Barnett looks on now at the ice pack on an injured leg. Let's hope it doesn't keep him out of the third test in Christchurch. We are there next Friday night. Under lights at Lancaster Park. Will it be the decider? Or will it be an opportunity for the Kiwis to wrap it up 3-0? The whitewash. I'll tell you what, Mark Ellis is pretty popular out there every time he touches the ball. Wow, they love him. Well, it could be a bit premature to be talking about whitewashes. The wind has died down on sideline, so no trouble for this Great Britain side to run it back deep into the Kiwis territory. And they find touch. That's good work. Great work with that kick. Don't the forwards love that when they can just amble down to a scrum? Yes, it's, it's great when you've got a, a player who can make 60 metres on the bounce and go into touch. A lot easier than working out. Some, some guys, some. Carl Hammond has come on for Great Britain. Carl Hammond from the St Helens Club making his debut. Big night for him. Daryl Powell. The dodgy hamstring standing up okay tonight. There's been a number of occasions where Great Britain have really looked lost on attack they've been looking for someone to pull something out of the bag and really no one going forward for them looking for Bobby Gordon and a few other of the senior players player injured in the tackle the referee didn't see anything suspicious in there Yeston Harris
Just do down in back play. Just getting to his feet now. As the play continues, 20 metres out from the Lions line. 18-15, it's New Zealand over Great Britain. The presence of uh, Grant Young and Joe Bugganar have really blossomed out uh, Quinton Pongia's game. Quinton's had a, had a well of a series and he's done, doing some great work there now that his front row partners are picking up the action. Well, they're not happy there. They believe the ball was ripped. The referee didn't see anything. We'll have another look at it here. It's Steve Malloy. Well, let's have a look at the South Sea replay. Uh, fair enough, he lost it. Come on, girls, now. Come on. Stacy, over here now. Stacy, hey. Jones putting the ball into the scrum. Ten metres inside Great Britain territory. Namu. Hammond was quick to claim him. Still nine and a half minutes to go, and in rugby league terms, that's a, a long time. A lot of play. Kearney. Sidero steals another seven, eight. Now almost 15 metres for Aero. A great run by the hooker from dummy half. Jones waits for it here. Vangana. The Kiwis trying to finish with a real flourish. Ridge brings Ellis infield. The former All Black is five metres out. Timu to Ridge. Ridge with the kick. It's still lying loose on the ground. And Accidental offside. Accidental offside. Accidental offside is the call. So it's going to be a feed into the scrum for the New Zealanders. They're going to get another crack at this Lions line. So that was a bit of bad luck for Great Britain there. Accidental offside the ruling. Down the blind. Tony Hero is on there. Now it's Vangana. Joe trying to storm his way through. He's only a half a metre out. Aero at dummy half, they need to shift it wide. The double round, and Jones gets it out to Timu. Pongia, inside it goes. Logan Swan, couple of tackles remaining. The Lions defence holding up, but Sidero got across the line and couldn't put it down. He just couldn't place it. Oh, so near for Sidero. And a try could have just about wrapped it up. Yes, yeah, great defence here from Dennis Best. Just have a look. He comes over top, stops Sid. Well, knocks the ball out. So a let off for the Lions. And now they are 30 out from their own line. Now it's Farrell. Yeah, the Lions really need to start, uh, you know, standing and offloading this ball a bit more and um, start uh, getting their, their wingers involved and see if they can pry open some gaps out wide from the Kiwis. That man there with the ball, Bobby Gordon, he's going to get involved. He's the one who's going to do something. All this man here, Dennis Betts. Betts taken by Kearney, but he got the pass out the back. O'Connor. Taken by Blackmore and Jones. Golding. What a great kick straight into the arms of Matthew Rich. Well, really, that was a nothing play. The, the blind side winners, it looks like they didn't even know what was happening. I doubt whether the communication was very good between Golding and his wingers then. But very easy for Rich to take. Ellis. Yeah, I just feel once you get over that 40 metre line, you've got to make the kicks competitive. It's no good just kicking the football. You've got to make the kick, you know, a competitive kick. Give your players a chance to get it back. The CRC man of the match will be named at the end of our telecast tonight. $500 for the New Zealander goes to be the man of the match and Hoppy. Into touch on the far side. Good tackle by Yester Harris. 18 to 15. New Zealand over Great Britain.
tea leaves. Let's do something. Okay, let's go in. The scrum to pack down on the halfway mark. Bobby Goulding puts it in and takes it out for Great Britain. Harris. If anything, Eston Harris can be a little predictable, can't he? Yeah, he can, but I, I, I feel he has lifted his game from the first test and uh, second half here tonight, he's come up with a couple of breaks and a couple of half breaks and, uh, you know, I, I think he's played pretty well tonight. Now it's Farrell turning. Just trying to set something up out wide. Yes, the meters inside New Zealand Territory. The players, uh, Bruce and Rydlinski, are the ones who really need to get in there and sniff around and probably run off a nice ball off Farrell or Dennis Betts. Two of the experienced players who can probably run to the line and offload. Here's O'Connor. Good meters by the front row. Good field position. Final tackle coming up now for Great Britain. They're down by three. Gilding. Kicking for Mark Ellis's flank. Hunt has it. He gets it back to Radlinski. Radlinski's going to kick. Where's the chase? It's off the uprights. And Stacey Jones was able to get away and back into the field of play. Well, good stuff from Stacey Jones there. A little scrum half. He had a look behind his back. There's no one there. He used the pads. A little bit of a shield and was able to get out. Actually, it was great composure from Stacey Jones because the... The, the feeling must have been there to make that ball dead, you know, which would have given Great Britain another shot at them. But uh, he had the presence of mind to pick the ball up and play on and play back into the field of play. Yes, it did look like he had a look at the referee and had a look who was chasing down on him. And he almost came close to forcing the ball, but decided to get up quick and run. Richie Blackmore! Ball. Richie Blackmore! Has he got the gas to get away? They come at him now. Still going! He throws it in field. Sit down. Charts the arm. It was a great run by Blackmore. But the bounce went against New Zealand and Great Britain have it. Yes, great work here from Richie. I thought he would have had the legs, but well, once again, the defence from Great Britain has been sound. The cover came across from that man, Bobby Goulding. Sir, saved a certain try. Great Britain really running out of, running out of time. Alan Hunt. Gilding. Now it's the final tackle. What do they do? It's the midfield bomb. Taken by Redlinski. That'll be a handover on the sixth tackle. So the Kiwis will no doubt take plenty of time with this set of six to try and eat up the minutes. Well, you have to admire this Great Britain side. They really are trying to throw everything at the Kiwis. And you do have to remember that minus a lot of their stars who are back in the UK, this Great Britain team have come down and done a tremendous job. Well, they, all they can do is what their coach asked them to do. And I think a, a coach would just love a team that went out there and had a go. And these guys are having a go out there. Already really gone into the game as underdogs. Still haven't given up. And it's not over yet. Still time on the clock. But it's New Zealand trying to hold on to their three-point advantage. If they can do it, they will win their first full series since 1984. It's been a long time between drinks. Double celebrations it will be because Matthew Rich has broken the record for the most number of test points. Rich pushing it down into the corner and Mather is going to have to run it out. Plenty of contenders for our CRC New Zealand man of the match. We'll have that for you. A little later on tonight. Now it's Hunt. It is now or never for Great Britain. Can they keep the series alive? Has someone got a little bit of magic? Can they spark something? Farrell, they go wide with numbers. There's the kick by Harris. Reed's getting back there. Redlinski storming down on him. It's still lying loose on the ground. A chance here for the Lions. Alex will have to clean up, and he does. And he just manages to stay in the field of play. It was the last throw of the dice for the Lions. And didn't they give it a great shake-up? Wow, Mark Ellis 
saved the day really matthew rich had all sorts of pressure coming down on him but that man there he's the crowd favorite too he got back great stuff he came from one side of the wing to the back of the field and really saved the kiwis because there are three or four great britain players ready to pounce on for a try time off has been signaled now it's time on they can't afford to make a mistake here the crowd roar and that is full time the team of 1984 led by fred arcoy will no doubt rejoice this one they were the last team to win a series against great britain against any of the major nations in fact and so now the 1996 kiwis have emulated that feat back in 1984 at half time great britain led by 13 points to eight but two tries in the second half to the kiwis one to wiki one to namu and a conversion to rich was enough to get the new zealanders home so they take the series two nil and now they'll try and wrap it up three nil in christchurch next week but stay with us on two sports action we will be back right after this break with more reaction from Palmerston North. Programs for Matthew Ridge and his 1996 Kiwis. They have wrapped up the three-match series 2-0 so far against the Lions. And it's been a long time between uh, drinks. Brent Todd, you were there in 85 and you were there in 89. Almost did it, but did, didn't quite pull it off. They did it tonight. Well, they did it. They did it in style, actually. They hung in there for the whole 80 minutes. It was a tremendous effort. I thought the back row of the Kiwis were just great out there tonight. They were the, probably the, the two best forwards in, the, in a great Kiwi pack. I'm sure they're down in the dress shed now celebrating. Although they won't be getting carried away because they'll want to make this one a 3-0 uh, clean sweep in the test series so look out in Christchurch the Kiwis will be on fire and it's going to they'll celebrate tonight but I'm sure after tonight it'll be back to business for a, a great week of training and it's going to be an exciting game in Christchurch I can't I'm wait to be down there that because the sun will be shining for sure okay that's Lancaster Bay next Friday night it's a long way away let's get some reaction from tonight's win first of all and Matthew Rich is with uh, Brendan Telfer and of course the Kiwis are really becoming experts at catch-up football yeah I guess we are I thought uh, we probably played uh, a little bit worse than what we did in the first test, but uh, we've got to give the guys some uh, a pat on the back for that. I think they dug deep in the second half, and you know we struggled a little bit out there today, but you know we hung in there right till the end and pinched a result in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes again. You say you struggled a bit out there. You're telling me that you didn't think the team played as well overall as they did last week in Auckland? Well, put it this way, I don't think we improved too much. Um, I think we've got a lot of character and a lot of spirit in the side, and, and once we can put it together. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot of potential here, and I think if we can put it together for 80 minutes, then uh, we'll be a side that uh, will be up there in the World Rugby League, I hope. Congratulations, Matthew, and thank you. Yeah, awesome. Well, here are the stats now, and this is how it looks. The most important one, the scoreline, 18 points to 15. And New Zealand dominated the territory and also the possession. But look at tackles made. New Zealand had to make 227, but uh, the Great Britain lines, 250. So that was uh, probably a telling stat in the end. They ran out a little bit of petrol there, the lines. So let's have a look at some of the scoring highlights now. Toddy, I know you're looking forward to seeing these again. The second half uh, tries in particular for New Zealand. And Ruben Wicke. Well, Steve Kearney, you know, he promotes the ball all the time. All he needs is a little bit of backup. And that time there, Ruben Wickey was the man on the spot. And still had a lot of work to do, Ruben Wickey here. He turned the Great Britain fullback inside and out. And uh, once he did that, he was gone. Look at Bobby Gordy also chasing there. But Ruben is a very, very strong runner. Renowned for his defence, but, well, a great attacking player. A bit of a gamble. Frank Hennicott put him in there, but he, he repaid the coach. That's for right. A great try. And, of course, it was uh, the New Zealand uh, backs who were uh, running right. And uh, towards the end, this is great work by Gene Namu. Yes, the decoy runners there really opened it up for Gene Namu. You saw they took the flies off him. There was a big gap to go through. And really, it was a good try from Gene Namu. He saw the gap, went for it and scored really a match-winning try. That's right, his 10th try in test matches, Gene Namu, and he still has a long way to go, such a young player. Well, while the uh, New Zealanders are celebrating, of course, uh, not much to celebrate for the Great Britain Lions, and their captain, Andy Farrell, is now with Brendan Telfer. Well, Andy Farrell, another very close encounter here. It must be terribly frustrating being so close in both of these test matches. How are you feeling right now? Absolutely devastated, really. I mean, uh, we've done so much hard work over the last two weeks, and uh, we've got nothing for it. And, um, you know, I was in the same situation as we was in last week, and we've not killed the game again, and, uh, you know, very disappointing. I mean, can you, can you tell us what, what's, what's happening in the second half? Here you are in, apparently in control of these matches at half-time with a useful sort of lead, and then suddenly there's nothing there for you in the second half. Yeah, maybe um, maybe we didn't control the ball just as good as we should have done, and uh, maybe uh, 
the Kiwi stepped up again out of him. I mean, I think it was a combination of those two things there. Thank you, Andy. Disappointment written all over Andy Farrell's face. Such a young man, just 21. I'm sure we're going to see more of him in the future. Well, John Mody, you uh, have been sitting here watching about 11 or so of uh, the Warriors running around in the 17-man squad. You must be pretty happy with what you, with what you saw tonight. Yeah, it's a great night for uh, New Zealand Rugby League, and it's uh, certainly a good night for the Warriors. But, uh, you know, the Great Britain side, they've, they've ended up with Nout, but, uh, you know, there's certainly plenty of, uh, plenty of courage, plenty of spirit in that, in that Lions jumper. And uh, anybody that loves Rugby League, they want to get down to Christchurch next week because this Great Britain side, there's, as I said, a lot of courage in it, and they won't give, it up, give up. And, John, where do you think uh, Great Britain can improve? Is there enough improvement there for them to uh, get something out of this tour? They haven't won a game yet. Well, I don't think there's a lot of improvement uh, needed, really. There's, there's nothing between the two sides. We, we saw in the first test, uh, you know, there was just nothing in it. This one was a real close affair. Uh, a try in the last couple of minutes could have pulled it out for Great Britain. So there's not a lot of difference in the two sides, and it could go bounce of the ball in uh, Christchurch. As I said, uh, we're in for a great test. John, we look forward to uh, more comments from you next Friday night on Two Sports Action, the third test from Lancaster Park. Thanks for your comments tonight. Stay with us on Two Sports Action. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have a look at our CRC man of the match. But uh, here's one of the bright moments from the second half. This did not lead to a try, but uh, Richie Blackmore with the pass inside. A lucky bounce could have seen New Zealand score yet a try. It wasn't to be, but don't worry about it. New Zealand won it in the end by 18 points to 15. We're back with more right after this. Could have been elated. 3 0 now. It's, it's, you can feel it. It's here. Look out, Christchurch. <laughs> One of the great smiles in New Zealand sport for Victoria's Kiwi coach, Frank Endicott. Yeah, we're all looking forward to next Friday night. And I think, uh, you know, we've got to look at this Great Britain team. There were some stars in there tonight, and they can come back. Well, they're, they've got some great players, really. Dennis Betts, to me, uh, he's had a tremendous series. The first game, I thought, he outstanding game. But tonight, well, he was everywhere and had a hand in a try, also scored a try. He, he is a real star and a, and a great player. And it just shows you the experience he's got as well. Bobby Golding, I think uh, his kicking game tonight wasn't as good as in the first test, but he was still out there. He's a real uh, menace, and he'll be fired up in uh, Christchurch. And what about the New Zealanders? And I know you were pretty <laughs> impressed with Grant Young and Quentin Pong well, out front. All... You always like the props anyway. No, no, I'm, I'm not, I, I am. Uh, well, I've got a bit of a soft spot for the front rowers, but I thought the whole forward pack today, and of course guys like Stacey Jones and, and Gene Namu, the whole backs will complement their forwards because without those forwards going forward and making the hard yards, really the backs can't fire. But... To me, I thought Steve right, Kearney, Kearney. Well, Steve Kearney had a tremendous game out there, offloading. He just needs a bit more backup, but uh, you know his defence. Well, he, I think he made the, the most tackles out there from, from the forwards, and you know just always offloading the ball, set up a good try. Steve Kearney was a great, had a great game. Well, you mentioned uh, one man before who is our CRC man of the match. Let's go to Brendan Telfer. CRC man of the match. Well, our CRC man of the match here at the Palmerston North Showgrounds tonight in the second test. And no prizes for guessing. It's gone to Stacey Jones. Congratulations, Stacey. Here's a check for $500, and it's all yours. Yeah, thanks a lot. You know, uh, it was a seven, like, the whole team played really well tonight, and um, we wanted to go out there and wrap it up, and we did that. There were some really stunning breaks from there tonight. Those breaks that you were making seemed to give the whole attack a lot of impetus. Um, yeah, you know, but it, it came down to pass from guys like Steve Kearney, Tony Iro. They, they set the platform down, uh, up front for us. You know, Grant Young, the whole forwards, Quinton Pong here, you know, and you know, me and Gene were there just to back them up. But you're the man, Stacey. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks to CRC and Two Sports. Stacey Jones, our CRC man of the match, $500 for him. And he played a starring role out there. Those little legs were pumping for 80 minutes. Yeah, well deserved there. But of course, as you mentioned, some great uh, players out there for New Zealand tonight. Well, Dwayne Mann, uh, I guess everyone else is saying you may as well have a crack at it too. We're looking forward to next Friday night now. Well, a very good traditional battle between these two countries. And uh, they didn't let us down tonight. Very entertaining game. Uh, unfortunately, Great Britain, well, they still have their pride intact, but a long overdue win for the Kiwis, and uh, this series will certainly be, feel very good for the players in the changing room at the moment. Now, Duane, it's going to be a little bit cooler down in Christchurch. That may suit the Great Britain side. What do you reckon? Well, you know, you never know. They, the Great Britain side, they certainly give it their best. Um, you know, they want to go home with some sort of win under their belt. It has been a, a bit of, of an upset tour for them with uh, all different things happening both on and off the field. But uh, again, we can see a very good tight encounter between these two sides again. And looking forward to the, the game down in Christchurch. And once again, uh, Duane, thank you for your uh, comments tonight. We look forward to seeing you at Lancaster Park next Friday night. And we'll have the action for you on Two Sports Action. Remember, the third and final test is next Friday, November 1st. It is uh, Christchurch, of course, Lancaster Park. And we have it for you 
8.30 next Friday. Will it be 3-0 to the New Zealanders? I think so. I think this is the time they're going to strike. Um, you know, Great Britain, it's going to be hard for them to come back from this. Although they're going to go there, show plenty of spirit, plenty of fire and determination and have a go for their coach. Uh, everything's gone against them on this tour and really they will dig deep. You always do in your last game, but New Zealand are so strong over the park and, and led by a tremendous captain in Matthew Ridge. Do you think that uh, Frank will be tempted to maybe use the interchange a little more, maybe bring, uh, now that the series has been wrapped up, players like Mark Ellis into it earlier on? No, I think that what he'll do, he'll stick to the same game plan, that the, the formula that's been working for him so far. I mean, I love to see Mark Ellis on there. He's a tremendous player and he's got a big future in the game, but I'm sure those guys, the, the, the top 13, they deserve to be out there and uh, he'll, he'll use them as long as possible and he'll just bring the young guys on. Uh, I'm sure they'll all get a game, especially if they're leading, they'll all get a game and, and it'll be great to see. Great for the Christchurch public to get out there and see it. And I really uh, can't see Great Britain making any more changes because, uh, you know, they, they've sent 11 players home and I think we've seen <laughs> their best 13 out there and they really don't go down to the bench, do they? Well, I hope that they, they haven't, you know, come off the game with, with some major injuries. I, I saw uh, a couple of players, uh, you know, limping off, but really they're going to struggle because, you know, they've got a top 13, but their bench, I and mean, that's when New Zealand win it on their bench, um, you know, when they bring on guys like Joe Wagner, um, we already talked about Mark Ellis. The, the New Zealand bench is very strong and, um, you know, they've really got 17 players who could, who could start the uh, game and Great Britain haven't got that. I think that they're going to do it tough. Um, you know, they'll probably hang on there for 60 minutes down in Christchurch, then New Zealand will run away with it. OK, so we'll see you at Lancaster Park next Friday night I, in your I hometown of Christchurch. I will be there, and so will everyone from Christchurch. We'll turn out to watch a tremendous game. Thanks for being with us on Two Sports Action from all the team. It is good night from a very happy Palmerston North. <laughs>